Please welcome your keynote speaker and head of business development at Shopify, Brennan Lowe. As the intro slide said, my name is Brennan Lowe. I'm head of business development, but more importantly, I am your MC today. Uh, we're going to take the next 50 minutes and walk you through uh, an introduction, really, to the to Algonquin College, to, to the programs, to a whole bunch of, of amazing services. Before I start that, with that, I want to give one more round of applause for Tyler, who was just awesome on the piano before you guys walked in. So, quick round of applause. is actually dueling pianos at Fat Tuesdays in the Byward Market. So a little plug for him there. I get a commission on anyone he sends. Um, so I hope everyone enjoyed breakfast with their faculties this morning. Um, a quick uh, housekeeping. If you are uh, sharing anything on social media, Student Services has taken a whole bunch of photos. Some you might see, some you might not have seen. Uh, so go and tag yourself uh, or report them for abuse uh, at your own discretion on Facebook. If you want to be part of the conversation on Twitter, AC uh, Orientation is the hashtag, AC Orientation. You can figure out what's, what else is going on uh, on campus that you might not have learned. Um, but to walk you through quickly through the agenda today, we're going to spend the next little while in this theater here. You're going to hear from the uh, Algonquin College president. Uh, you're going to learn about a whole bunch of amazing services that are available to you. Some great uh, guest speakers are going to come show some awesome videos. After the presentation, uh, stay seated. We're going to call you out by program, and the program coordinators will have a whole bunch of signs with your with your program on them. You're going to follow them out of the theater. Um, afterwards, uh, we have uh, guided tours across campus. So if you aren't familiar with the campus yet, uh, there's a whole bunch of tours you can sign up outside of the theater uh, in front of the banquet. There, they'll, they'll be uh, available. And then finally, uh, throughout the day, if you have any questions, there's a whole bunch of folks in those green T-shirts. Uh, those are the uh, orientation guides. Uh, don't hesitate to stop and ask them about any of the questions that you may have. So um, that's it really for housekeeping. Uh, so to get the program started, uh, I'd like to uh, invite uh, Algonquin President uh, Cheryl Jensen, who's going to give you an official welcome to Algonquin College. So please uh, put your hands together. Let me welcome Cheryl. Brennan, you know, we're very, very fortunate to have Brennan here today from Shopify, which is a major, uh, major company here in Ottawa, started in Ottawa, shows the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial spirit of Ottawa uh, and the post-secondary institutions here. So thanks, Brennan, for giving us your time. You're a busy guy. So good morning. And as you heard, my name is Cheryl Jensen. I'm the president here at Algonquin College. And I want to welcome you to College Orientation Day, and I want to thank you from me for choosing Algonquin College. And this is our School of Business, School of Media and Design, and General Arts and Science. So a big group, I can just kind of see you out there. It's dark, but I saw you having breakfast this morning. So thanks for coming to this session. And you know, I also want to offer you a heartfelt congratulations on being chosen to attend Algonquin. We pride ourselves on attracting students who are hardworking, tenacious, and innovative. I'm sure you feel that way about yourself as well. Our students come from all walks of life, and our mission is to transform their hopes and dreams into skills and knowledge, leading you to lifelong career success. And this is what we hope for you. College is a time of independence and growth, and the education that you will get here will open doors for you if you put in the work. I can say that because I'm a mom and I'm a teacher. I'll tell you a little bit about me in a, a bit. There is going to be a lot of work, but once you get through, it'll be work well worth it. And just remember, throughout your time here, you are never alone. We're here to help you all along that way. I encourage you to get involved and become a part of the Algonquin community, joining clubs, attending social events, and taking part in lots of volunteer activities. It's a great opportunity for you to explore new interests, new experiences, because Algonquin has an amazing culture, and it extends beyond the classroom. We'll have more on that from the Student Support Services, who will be speaking about our services and our volunteer opportunities and lots of community projects a little later on. So I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I did start in the college system a long, long time ago. I was a teacher, um, I was a chair, a dean of technology and trades, a vice president academic, and I came to Algonquin as president in 2014, August 2014. 
I still remember the feeling of excitement that came with starting in a new uh, college and a new city, a new chapter. And I'm sure you feel that excitement today. But as all also happens with a new beginning, I was a little bit nervous. Well, maybe pretty nervous in my first few days. And some of you may feel that way right now as well, wondering about your new city or your new college, and or if you'll make friends, or even about finding your way around the campus, all those things that give us the jitters. Rest assured, we are here to help and give you whatever support you might require. If you ever feel lost, a little bit lost on this big campus, look for a college employee wearing a name tag. I have mine on today on my scarf. If you see this name tag, we work here and we will help you find your way. That's why we wear them, to help you identify us and uh, that we are here to help you. I can say with certainty that I made the right choice coming to Algonquin to this fine institution and I know you will soon discover the same. Algonquin is a place that cares about people, cares about you. It's an engaged and supportive community with the core values of caring, learning, integrity and respect. We're committed to maintaining a healthy and safe learning, living, social, recreational and working environment. We are dedicated to maintaining a campus free of discrimination and harassment. And we strive to foster an atmosphere of acceptance, as well as healthy attitudes and behaviors towards sexuality, sex, and gender roles. If you find yourself needing assistance with anything, be it school, a relationship, your mental or physical health, your finances, or more, there are people on staff who can help. I might have to talk to a few people about my finances. I spent way too much money at Christmas time. So this involves student success specialists, counselors, learning strategists, professors and staff, as well as departments such as our health services, financial aid and student awards, and the Students Association, one of the best in the country, I would say, just to name a few. Algonquin has an entire support network dedicated to helping you succeed. During the first week of school, you will see Algonquin employees across campus wearing green Here to Help t-shirts and staffing the Here to Help information booth. I have my Here to Help button on today. These college employees can assist you with any questions or concerns that you may have, so please don't be afraid to ask. While you're here, you'll learn a lot. But your college experience will also be about the people you meet, the professors who will inspire you, there are so many of them here that inspire me every day, and the friendships that you will make that will last a, a lifetime. We know that you will leave here with some amazing memories. So I look forward to seeing you in the halls. If you see me, say hi, there are lots of you, but you, at least today, will notice my pink jacket. If you have any questions or need anything at all, look for somebody wearing a name tag. And I look forward to shaking every single one of your hands when you graduate in a few years from this fine institution. Good luck and have fun. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. What a warm welcome. That's awesome. Great, so I'm going to take the next 15 minutes and I'm going to share with you a little bit about my story and some of my perspectives and hopefully uh, you guys are able to draw from that, take some lessons, apply them, not apply them, it's up to you, your orientation. Uh, but I'm going to start quickly with Shopify and Cheryl had some, some nice things to say about Shopify. For those of you that aren't familiar, uh, we're a technology company, a software based company that started in Ottawa in 2005. Uh, it actually started out of the Bridgehead Coffee Shop on Elgin Street uh, in, here in downtown Ottawa. If you didn't know that, it's kind of cool. It's about three folks. Uh, they actually didn't want to pay for internet, so they tried to steal as much of the internet from Bridgehead as possible before they had to get an office. Um, and 11, uh, 11 years ago, or 11 years today, uh, later, uh, we were able to take the company uh, public on the New York Stock Exchange, on the Toronto Stock Exchange, valued over $2 billion, uh, over 1,200 employees in four different cities, and it's an amazing Ottawa success story. And the reason I bring that up is because if you're from Ottawa, uh, as, as I was, Ottawa was, you know, had a reputation of being kind of a boring city, right? And uh, I think there's a lot of great things going on now. I'm, I'm really excited. I've never been more bullish uh, than to be in Ottawa and for Ottawa's future. We have a great football team, a sports is your thing, you know, great hockey team, a lot of great things happening in Lansdowne, a lot of exciting things. So if you're new to Ottawa, you have a lot to look forward to, a lot to discover. You're going to hear about a whole bunch of student associations and programs that are going to allow you to discover the city. So get pretty excited. 
Um, so on my side, I wanted to share really three themes with you uh, from my personal experience as a student in post-secondary. <clears throat> One of the things uh, to start off is intention, right? And asking yourself, what is the intention that you have for being here today, for, for going to college? What are you hoping to achieve? And I think most of you are probably thinking to yourself, well, you idiot, I'm here to get a degree, I'm here to get a better job, I'm here to maybe make more money, be a better job than I had before. I'd say that's a pretty fair intention. Now, I think I had the same intention during my orientation where I was sitting in a theater just like this, listening to someone like me talk about this, and it's kind of clued into me then that my intention actually, at the time, was to get a, was to get a job, but what I didn't realize is that as I looked to my left and I looked to my right, a lot of people sitting beside me probably had that same intention. Right? And what I realized was I was actually kind of looking at my competitors. Right? Because at graduation, guess what? Everybody sitting there waiting to go on stage to accept their degree, their diploma, was going to have the same intention of getting that job I wanted, getting it at the best company, and getting it at the pay that I wanted. So my intention shifted. And I thought about, I want to be the best student possible. Right? That's a little bit of a difference there. But I wanted my intention to be, I just want to graduate, to I want to be the best possible student. Because my mind said that if I'm the best possible student, that's things, that's ammo that I can use in an interview on a resume that's going to differentiate myself. It's going to win this race. So I'll give you a concrete example. I remember actually vividly after the first semester going home, my parents wanted to know how my marks were, how my exams were going, what I was going to be doing over the next couple of weeks in preparation for this. And I kind of dropped this theory on them. And I said, guys, I think I got this whole you know, university college thing figured out. I'm going to be the school's best C-level student. I missed like a backhand from my dad by about this much. <laughs> Immigrant father. So. Um, so, but my theory was here's all the time it's going to take me to be an A level student, and here's the amount of time it's going to take me to be a C level student. That's a lot of time, right? I'm still going to leave with that same piece of paper. So, in my mind, I said, I'm going to be the best C level student. I'm going to take all this time, I'm going to get involved with associations, I'm going to volunteer my time. I'm going to work jobs, not, not just for the money, but jobs so I can figure out if I like doing this or I like doing that. I was going to use all that time to differentiate myself. So go back to yourself. You know, what is your intention of being here today? Have you thought about beyond just getting a piece of paper that signifies that you know how to learn good? Right? Intention. Number two, resourcefulness. I have this theory that today's generations, a lot of the generations around us, we're getting really, really lazy. Right? Like we have in our pockets you know, technology that 10, 50 years ago was probably the smartest computer on the planet in our pocket. You know, we can learn hundreds of years of human studies, we can learn languages, we can basically travel the world, we can go on Google Maps, we can see all kinds of things from our phone, and yet we elect to use a lot of that time to Snapchat and to you know, look at cat videos and to play Clash of Clans. Like, humanity, you know, I hope there's a, you know, a next step. But, um, a lot of you guys, though, are, are actually seeing the benefit, though, of a lot of our peers being distracted and lazy. Right? The first thing is effort. Right? You guys today are about 50% of the people you'll find in your classes in a couple of weeks' time. Right? This little bit of effort coming this morning to sit through this shows how you're already starting to differentiate yourself from your peers. So take that one step further. How do you continue to do this throughout the time here at Algonquin? Will you become resourceful? Actually, you're going to hear from um, Dan and Jeff in a second, guy sharing with you a lot of the services available at the college for you to take advantage of. Now, with a little bit of effort, a lot of you actually aren't going to take advantage of that, but for those of you that do, here's a little bit of a tip. I actually think that the most valuable uh, student services available to you today is actually the alumni network, the alumni group. Um, when I was at school, I was part of the entrepreneurship club, and we had this business dinner event that would unite uh, business students with business professionals uh, together in a room over uh, dinner and you could network and mingle. And part of the responsibility of being on the organizing committee was actually finding a keynote speaker. Now, at the time, you know, on LinkedIn, I had like five connections, right? One of them being my mom. Like, I didn't know anybody. No professional network. I had like, my friends in high school, that was about it. And what I realized is that I went to the, uh, as I went to the, the alumni network, I had, you know, this is a big binder that basically shows you all of the people that the school was in connection with. And as you go through that, it was actually really impressive. Like Clive Badeau, the founder of WestJet, and Frank O'Day from Second Cup. You know, these are all people that we are connected with. And the point of this all is really the follow-on. And this tip is really that I think the most undervalued, uh, undervalued uh, piece of uh, asset to going to the school is calling yourself a student. 
Right? So I think a lot of people don't actually take full advantage of the title being a student. But what do I mean by this? And we'll connect this to the first part. Right? I had the potential to have a connection with a lot of industry leaders out there, people that were running the best companies, that were hiring or, or running the best teams, people that were in charge of who was getting that best job. And a simple email to them saying, hey, you know, I'm a student today, I really admire what you're doing, I see you went to the same school, I see you went to the same program as me, right? I'm really passionate about what you do, I'd love to be able to buy you a coffee, talk about this, get to connect with you. My intention wasn't to get a job, and that was probably the best thing. My intention was to be a better student. And to be a better student, I wanted to surround myself with mentors, some of the best people in the industry, before I had to ask them for anything. So I used the title of student to get myself further ahead. I used being resourceful, being creative, taking a bit of risk, and you know, once a week, once every two weeks, reach out to industry leaders. All of a sudden, I had an amazing network. My peers had none of that, right? So if you can figure out your intention, if you can find ways to be resourceful, you're really putting yourself ahead of the game. The third thing I wanted to share was this idea of don't plan for the unexpected. Right? Mike Tyson actually says this best. You know, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Right? And that's a really important uh, idea. Right? Everyone thinks they know where they're going until life throws something unexpected at them. So for me personally, my story is at the end of my first year, I remember this very vividly, you know, my mom called me and she let me know that my dad had passed away and committed suicide. Right? So there's, there's things in life that you really can't plan for at all, and that's definitely one of them. And I had a choice at that point in time. You have a choice in any of these unexpected situations. You can do really one of two things. You can act, or you can react, or you can respond. And reacting is really that, that primal instinct to say, you know, getting punched in the face, you, you, you go kind of crazy. You throw all logic, all rational thoughts out of your head, and you, you, you do whatever you feel is right in that specific moment. But you also have another option. And for me, you know, reacting could have meant I could have shut myself in, I could have dropped out of school, I could have not worked, I could have locked everybody out of my life, and my friends and my family, they had enough respect for me where they would have probably said, that's fine, you know, life gave them a, a curveball, right? That was, that was really hard, he can, he can do that. That, 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 that sucks. But responding takes being really comfortable with the uncomfortable. It's a terrible feeling, but it's this idea that pain is temporary, right? Pain is temporary. And if you can get good at understanding that life is not going to go always how you plan, right? Things are going to happen that you can't expect. But if you get really good at dealing with it, you put yourself at a huge advantage. These are moments that help you define yourself, right? And that's part of me. Stephen Colbert says, you know, I, I love the things I most wish hadn't happened to me. I love the things that I most wish hadn't happened to me. It's not to say that I wish they happened. It's to say that I've dealt with them and that's who I am. That's part of why I'm here today. Right, so you have a moment today to define yourself. Right, think about your intention. Think about why it is you're here, what you want to accomplish. Maybe it's just getting a piece of paper. Maybe it goes beyond that, but you're not entirely sure. You don't have to share it with anyone. Just spend some time thinking about it. Okay, be resourceful. There's a lot of tools here, a lot, a lot of tools, and half of you, probably less than half of you, are going to take any kind of advantage of those tools. So think about how that's going to differentiate you right out of the gate. And third, don't spend time, don't waste time thinking about the unexpected. Some of those things you just can't plan for. But understand those are great opportunities to, to take yourself to the next level. So with that, I thank you, I say good luck, and on with the show. Okay, as I mentioned, up next we have Student Services. Student Services is pleased to offer resources, services, and support to help you succeed during your time with Algonquin College and beyond, wherever life takes you. Whether you're looking for academic help, interested in activities to get more involved in the Algonquin community, or seeking a job or volunteer opportunities, you'll find the information and resources you need through Student Services. So please uh, put your hands together. Let's welcome Dan and Jeff. Hello, Dan. Hello, Jeff. My name is Jeffrey Cassande. I'm a business admin student majoring in HR. And my name is Dan Cuddy. I'm the information and outreach liaison for Student Services. College is an adventure. It's a new environment with new experiences and new people. College is also a lot like a pizza. It can be very fulfilling and very tasty if you put time to get the right ingredients into it. So, just like making a pizza, well, not just like making a pizza, but while you're here at college, we're with you every step of the way. We might not help you with the pizza, but we'll help you with college. So, you're gonna find that in the next few minutes, we're gonna power through some of the supports and resources and stuff that we have available to you. And you might be thinking, nah, I probably don't need that. 
Well, that might be the case, but you might also need some of these things along the way. So we just want to make sure that you know what's available to you. So because today has had a lot of information for you, a lot of maybe a little bit overwhelming, uh, we just decided to break things down into three really easy components. Social support, academic support, and personal support. So let's start with social. So today you're probably feeling a lot of energy. Maybe you're here with some friends from high school, or you met some people in line at breakfast, or even sat down and had breakfast with them. Use that energy to propel yourself forward from this point. The one place to start is the AC Hub. The AC Hub is located on the second floor of E-Building, and it's an open space where students can come, collaborate, and get engaged with Algonquin College. Right, and our Mammoth Ostwin Center is located on the first floor of the Student Commons, and it celebrates all of our Aboriginal culture and is open to all students. The Alumni Foundation can help you stay connected to Algonquin College even after you graduate. Okay, let's turn to the academic supports. Now, if you're a lot like Dr. Sheldon Cooper, he has a routine. Some of you might have scheduled the first month or so of your college based on your classes and what's happening. Sometimes, though, that can hinder you a little bit. So what you can do is come to Student Support Services and get a fresh look at your schedule. Okay, so we have a few departments that can help specifically with this. So the Center for Students with Disabilities is a department that is entirely dedicated to advocacy, accessibility, that type of thing, if there's any type of disability that might cause some kind of challenge for you. Um, the, the keynote with the, the CSD is that people have to self-identify. You have to register there for us to know how we can accommodate you best. Our counseling service area, well, they're going to provide some help with things like time management, um, studies, study tips, how to do notes effectively, the type of stuff that you would use in your academic world. The library is located on the second floor of C Building, and it's a great place to start whenever you get an assignment or you just have a project that you have to get done. The library staff can help you and point you in the right direction of resources, and those same resources are available online 24-7. And let's say there's a course that's giving you a bit of a hard time. For me, it would be math. Um, but our peer tutoring area is available to match you with uh, qualified peer tutors who have gone through the course before and can help you on a one-on-one -on -one type of an environment. The Student Learning Center is a little bit different. It provides the fundamentals of, of say, all of math, as an example. Uh, the fundamentals on a one-on-one -on -one kind of a, a experience with a coach. And they help with math, English, and computer topics. Now we'll move on to personal support. Everybody knows life happens. Things come up that jar our schedules, they throw us off, and we just don't expect it. Student services can help you, and Dan will help you. Well, the first place you can go to is the AC Hub, and it's a team of student staff members. I am one of the employees there, and we can help you talk to the right people and to get you to the right places. Right, and then counseling comes up back up on our show here for a second, and counseling is gonna help you with things um, that might come up in your life. Maybe you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, a little bit of anxiety. Um, depression, whatever it might be on a more personal side of things, they can help with that as well. The Employment Support Center is located on the third floor, and they can help you when it comes time to find a job. They'll run one-on-one -on -one interview sessions, go over your resume and your cover letter. And just like your walk-in clinic would be in your local community, our health services has nurses and doctors available that can provide professional and confidential help with medical-related things. And finally, financial aid and uh, student awards. Financial aid will help with things like uh, OSAP, and the student awards side is things like um, bursaries, scholarships, that type of thing. So to sum this all up, um, we're here to help. And along with what we've talked about briefly, there's also a website at the bottom that has all of the uh, links to the information further, and we're gonna give you some magnets on the way out so you have a little bit more information. But we wanna highlight the central points where you would get access to this stuff here on campus. So let's start with the third floor of the Student Commons at the Welcome Center. That's where you're gonna go if you're registering for Center for Students with Disabilities, making an appointment with counseling, or accessing the employment support there. A lot of you guys have already experienced the registrar's office, which is on the first floor of C building. So you went there for your first day to register for classes to help you out every year, when you graduate, and even after that. Okay, I mentioned earlier the financial aid and student awards part, that's also accessible through where the registrar's office is on the first floor of C building. And finally, the Alumni Foundation, they'll help you stay connected with Algonquin College through emails and through uh, events that happen. So now we just have to flip a little bit. Cheryl mentioned earlier how um, dedicated we are to ensuring people know. We have to flip a little bit to a really serious topic, and that is in relation to sexual violence and sexual harassment on campus, and those things are never okay here. So we're gonna show you a really quick video. It's kind of fun, but this is not necessarily a fun topic, um, but it's a serious one. So we wanna roll this video and enjoy. Thanks. Thank you. If you're still struggling with consent, just imagine instead of initiating sex, you're making them a cup of tea. You say, hey, would you like a cup of tea? And they go, oh my God, I would love a cup of tea. Thank you. Then you know they want a cup of tea. If you say, hey, would you like a cup of tea? And they're like, oh, you know, I'm not really sure. Uh, then you can make them a cup of tea or not, but be aware they might not drink it. 
And if they don't drink it, then, and this is the important part, don't make them drink it. Just because you made it doesn't mean you are entitled to watch them drink it. And if they say no thank you, then don't make them tea at all. Just don't make them tea. Don't make them drink tea. Don't get annoyed at them for not wanting tea. They just don't want tea, okay? They might say, yes, please, that's kind of you. And then when the tea arrives, they actually don't want the tea at all. <laughs> sure, that's kind of annoying as you've gone to all the effort of making the tea, but they remain under no obligation to drink the tea. They did want tea, now they don't. Some people change their mind in the time that it takes to boil the kettle, brew the tea, and add the milk. And it's okay for people to change their mind. And you are still not entitled to watch them drink it. And if they're unconscious, don't make them tea. Unconscious people don't want tea. And they can't answer the question, do you want tea? Because they're unconscious. Okay, maybe they were conscious when you asked them if they wanted tea. And they said yes. But in the time it took you to boil the kettle, brew the tea, and add the milk, they are now unconscious. You should just put the tea down. Make sure the unconscious person is safe. And this is the important part again. Don't make them drink the tea. They said yes then, sure, but unconscious people don't want tea. If someone said yes to tea, started drinking it, and then passed out before they'd finished it, don't keep on pouring it down their throat. Take the tea away. Make sure they're safe, because unconscious people don't want tea. Trust me on this. If someone said yes to tea around your house last Saturday, that doesn't mean they want you to make them tea all the time. They don't want you to come around to their place unexpectedly and make them tea and force them to drink it, going, but you wanted tea last week. Or to wake up to find you pouring tea down their throat, going, but you wanted tea last night. But if you can understand how completely ludicrous it is to force people to have tea when they don't want tea, and you're able to understand when people don't want tea, then how hard is it to understand it when it comes to sex? Whether it's tea or sex, consent is everything. And on that note, I'm going to go make myself a cup of tea. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Dan and Jeff, from before. Um, so there's a lot of information that they just threw at you. I, I see a whole bunch of you guys taking notes, so thanks for doing that. Um, no, there's no one taking notes, but <laughs> important reminder, uh, as you exit the theater, there's going to be a whole bunch of uh, individuals handing you magnets. They got all of the important information you need to know, uh, links, websites, uh, all, you know, all the kind of things that were on that slideshow, so uh, look out for those. Um, there will be a services trade show tomorrow, 11 uh, a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, in the main area of the student commons, so if you want to learn more and chat with any of the representatives, you can do so then. Uh, but now we have a presentation from the Algonquin Students Association. The Student Association is a not-for-profit corporation. It is their mission to create an environment that inspires a passion for student success. A board of directors governs the Student Association that make all the key decisions that affect you, the student. Please welcome this year's board of directors to tell you more about what the Student Association can do for you. My name's Sarah and I'm the president of the Students Association and I'm joined here by most of our board of directors. So as you just heard, our mission is to create an environment that inspires a passion for student success. And some of the ways that we do this are through all the services and facilities that we offer. So our friends Liv and Viv, they like to make weekly videos for us and they're going to help us show you some of what's available to you through the essay. Sometimes you just need a quiet space to get away and get your studying done. The Students Association offers silent study rooms in the E building and E building, offering you a place to focus. Most people don't know that the Starbucks on campus is actually run by the Student Association. Come on by to the Student Commons building for a premium cup of coffee, a frappuccino, or even an afternoon pick-me-up before your last class. One of our most popular services are our meeting rooms. They're free for all students and available for any group projects that you need to do. We've got four rooms located in the Student Commons building, as well as two rooms located in the A building. See the Student Association front desk, room E114, for Student Commons bookings, and see Fitness Zone for A building booking. The Fitness Zone is the go-to place on campus for all of your fitness needs. With a spacious cardiovascular area with individual TVs to watch, a large pre-course electorized section, and a free weight and plate loaded area for all of your lifting needs. The Fitness Zone also offers personal training, massage therapy, and aerobics classes on site. 
Come check it out in A125. Welcome to the club's room, where the clubs meet and plan all their events. Be sure to come say hi to us in room E209 of the Student Commons building, and check out our website to get a full listing of all the clubs that we have to offer. The Food Cupboard is a service funded by the Algonquin Students Association and various community members. It provides students who are in need the opportunity to receive a three-day supply of food and basic necessities once a month. If you wish to donate, you can visit the Food Cupboard directly in room C050 or the Student Association front office in the Student Commons building, room E114. The gymnasium, also known as the Ron Port Athletic Facility, is home to the men's and women's Thunder Varsity team. This 11,000 square foot wood floor gymnasium is also where many of the campus rec activities take place, such as badminton, floor hockey, basketball, and volleyball. The Impact Zone is a state-of-the-art martial arts training facility that offers lots of great classes, such as boxing, MMA, and jiu-jitsu. You also have the opportunity to train with UFC fighters during our yearly seminars, which have in the past included Patrick Cote, Frankie Edgar, and Chuck Liddell. The Algonquin Commons Theater is a state-of-the-art venue equipped with one of the best sound and lighting systems in Ottawa. This 700-seat theater is able to convert into an 835-capacity venue, which includes standing room for over 300 people on the floor level in front of the stage, making it one of the most versatile venues in the city. The theater has played host to an array of concerts and events over the past few years, Concerts ranging from Randy Bachman to Vance Joy, Q&A events with Morgan Spurlock and Kenny vs. Spenny, and even a live taping of the show This Hour Has 22 Minutes. Whether it's an Algonquin essay show or an outside rental, one thing is for sure is this theater packs a lot of excitement into one building. Sometimes on campus, you just need a break. The observatory is the perfect spot to do just that. While being a great place for intimate shows, the observatory also has couches, TVs, pool tables, and of course, great food. the video, the essay puts on a huge variety of events every month. We have one more video for, uh, to show you uh, some of our upcoming events. To find out more about the essay events and services like the health and dental plan, or to find out how you can become a director and get involved with the essay, visit our website algonquinessay.com or visit the essay street team at their booth out in the commons. Have a great day and welcome to Algonquin. United Kingdom would be an island full of grannies waiting to give me tea and advice. This island's like living inside your dad's head while he's driving. Just needlessly angry and accidentally racist all the time. <laughs> Black olives, I guess, some black olives, as well as some onion, and uh, just a little lettuce on top of that as well. I'm just going to buy these condoms, because I'm planning on making love to a woman tonight, and I'm really excited about that. Okay? You're probably saying to yourself, boy, who's the lucky lady? Fantastic. That Tom Green show looks like it's going to be a total blast, but Woo! I think, uh, is Tom here? <laughs> I don't know about you, but MMA fighting seems uh, scary as hell. Okay, cool. So I'm going to wrap things up right now. Uh, stay seated, because uh, before we go on to the next part of the college orientation, we want to thank all the people that helped make today, uh, this, or this morning happen. So on behalf of the AC Hub, I would like to thank all the volunteers, the staff, the faculty who helped organize this day. So please round of applause for those people. Uh, without all of their support. 